Okay, well, I'm sitting at the water, our, our water station, filling up the water truck. The post seeding spraying has begun. Uh, we're done seeding, uh, been done for oh, a couple weeks, but uh, the peas are getting to the point where it needs now to put the grassy uh, herbicides on to kill the grass, uh, wild oats, cheatgrass, that kind of stuff in the peas. They're looking okay. Um, but uh, they they don't use up much deep moisture and we don't have any deep moisture anyway so they just take on the little rains the sh the light rains you know well, light rains a half inch is a great rain anymore we just got uh, three tents uh, about four days ago about yeah about four days ago and that's our biggest w rain event since the 12th of August 2021 so yeah it's been a little bit uh, a little bit dry but you never know about you know what's going to come up next week it might rain in time and uh, you'll start getting more of a crop and and you've got to do these things preemptively as far as spraying um, so you you figure that well, I could drought out but you don't want to get caught when harvest comes and you do have somewhat of a crop out there and then it's a mass of weeds. So anyway, I'm sitting here and enjoying filling the water truck. Uh, this is what I got to look at. Love me. Uh, get these nice fluffy clouds floating by, beautiful blue skies, no wind, which is, uh, that's an awesome, that's awesome feeling to feel. Um, so anyway, yep, but I'm just sitting here and uh, reading some of the comments and uh, we'll uh, I'll keep uh, looking for the ones that need to be commented on. Uh, one thing that's, you know, a number of people are saying, well, if it's dry, why don't you just haul water to the fields and uh, irrigate? Well, this truck holds, let's say, 5,000 gallons of water. One inch of water on a rain We'll do about 20, let's uh, just say 27,000 gallons for every inch that uh, the rain puts per acre. So this is uh, not even one quarter of the amount of what a one inch, so it'd be like 25 hundredths or a quarter of an inch of rain if we did it on one acre. Then you take that times 5,000 acres of spring wheat or wheat and then other crops, uh, you can see that there's no way that you could haul any amount. And it takes it's, it takes a total of five inches to just start pushing, to push the crop up to the point where it'll produce uh, heads and some seeds. And then anything you get above that, it keeps that into the yield. So it's a insurmountable mountain, or what you call a wave. Um, to be able to go out and to haul water to irrigate the crop. It just doesn't, it just won't work, won't pencil out. So we're pretty much uh, with no groundwater, no irrigation water available anywhere around here. We're uh, just whatever the uh, Lord provides as far as irrigation water from the clouds. So, but we've been down this road before um, and it'll, it will have our dry years and our wet years, and this is some of the dry ones. And we'll get through this and then get on to the wet ones. So anyway, I'm just enjoying it. I have Kobe here somewhere. He's out checking uh, to see if any holes have any furry things in them. And I'll get this filled and get it to the field and, and keep the sprayers going. Let's go do some crop scouting. I gotta show you guys some stuff, but first, I need some glasses. Throwaways, cheap, they last. Maybe not the most stylish, but you know what? I'm harder on glasses and hats, so it works. Well, this is a field that was kind of in the middle of seed and spring wheat. Doesn't look very good. There's not much out of the ground. Uh, I was just looking here. Just the camera on. 
it hasn't even germinated. Oh man, it's a little soft, it might. There's some moisture in the ground there. We got like three tenths about almost a week ago. You'd think it'd be germinated by now. But I mean, there's, there's nothing growing across here. Occasionally a couple streaks of green where there might've been some moisture where we hit, but um, I think the, the theme of the story you guys are gonna see as I go across the ground here is it was so dry seeding. You know, when we seeded our peas, there was just enough moisture then to get the peas up. That was why we got in the ground so early. That's why we were pushing so hard to get to seeding because we were afraid this might happen. Uh, but what happened is that moisture is now wicked down lower and wicked up because the ground's warming up and the wind's blowing. And when by the time we got to seeding, we were putting our seeds in dry dirt and they just have not even three tenths of rain. It's so dry, three tenths just doesn't go very far. This hasn't been enough to get things going. There are some crops that you guys will see in here a little bit that are, are growing and look okay. This one, it's like 110 acres, 120 acres, and maybe some low spots are gonna grow. It's gonna be so patchy. All right, this one, a little more mellow ground. It was seeded a little bit earlier. Overall, uh, looks like a pretty good stand. I mean, compared to what we were last field in, this stuff's up. I mean, this stuff will look decent. If it gets some moisture here, it'll fill out and really start turning like a green lawn. But definitely better than the last stuff. I think there's still some spots that are probably dry that haven't had a chance to germinate yet. But overall, I'd probably say 80% of this field is up and out of the ground and growing strong. So here are a couple miles further down the road. This is a common occurrence I think you're gonna see. Areas where there's a patch of green stuff growing, nothing. Tire tracks typically are dry. There's not much going on there. Ground was just compact a little harder. Just didn't have a chance to really get the germination going. Like right here is some very yellow looking spring wheat. And it wasn't very deep. I mean, that's one reason why it's not growing. It was barely an inch deep. It probably should have been a lot deeper. We got some moisture here, so there's definitely some stuff going, but the real yellow coming out of the ground they're running out of steam. There was just enough moisture to get some of those to start growing. They had just enough energy to just poke up to the surface and then they're just kind of dying off. And this light rain that we've had a couple days here and there, like a 10th, 500, something like that, just helps soften the surface just enough that hopefully they can get out, get some sunlight and live just long enough to hopefully get a rain in a week or two here. They're saying some maybe next week. Originally we had planned on seeding the entire farm. We were gonna crop everything, even though we had such a dry year last year with inputs being as expensive as they are. We figured we'd put a, the cheapest crops down we could put and hopefully not put as much chemical down and save some money. But as we were going, we just realized it's just so dry that we're just basically putting seed to probably fail. So when you're at that point with seed, it's just not worth you really waste it. Well, this is our chem file. This is land that we were gonna seed. We didn't, so it's sitting fallow right now. And you can see there's a whole flush of kosher starting to grow. There are little buttons right now. Great time to spray them. Just judging from the, the stage that they're at, I'd say I gotta start running the sprayer across this land here in probably the next week or so. So it's good to know. First chem follow operation is gonna be up here soon. We got about 2,000 acres of chem follow in. About, well, more like 2,500. So it's gonna take a few passes, but What's nice about chem follow is I typically can go a little faster, a little less gallonage, and uh, cover a lot of acres quickly in a day. So that's nice. As long as it kills the weeds. Their gophers are out right there. Little guy, just a little gopher. There's our neighbor's fields over there. It looks like spring wheat. And it looks like the same as ours. Now this little change of plants, this is our peas. Some of the earlier seeded stuff. Some of the headlands are some bare areas where the ground compaction, a little drier, kind of the same situation we're dealing with. But overall, our peas have a pretty good stand. I'm just looking across. I mean, it's it's full. Every every row is full. A lot of peas growing. They're just shooting right off. I've already sprayed the grass herbicide on them, and they. The pre-spray that we had, the pre-emergent spray that I put down, it needs water on it right after you spray it, and it didn't get it for about three weeks. So it's not gonna be as effective at killing broadleafs that try to grow up in this. So there could be some broadleafs that might poke up that 
it's just how it is we can't deal with it we're just gonna have to see what happens when harvest comes but like this stuff i sprayed these grasses and they should be dying i don't see any color change on them yet so i'll keep a closer eye on it but i know that clefidum takes it takes a good week at least to start seeing a noticeable color difference and then it does fry it down but that's encouraging that's it's good to see our peas are doing really good that might be the one crop that we can really be proud of i guess you could say <laughs> Unless it doesn't get any more rain from here on out, then, then it's going to be a failure anyways. But I'd say the pea stand right now is, if you were going to do bad, poor, fair, good, and excellent, it's at least good. And that's good. All right, now for the winter wheat. Yeah, I know. It's bad. There is not much growing here. Occasional plant here and there. This is our worst field by far. We're going to spray it out. It's not going to go to crop. It's going to get knocked out. When I start chem following this area, I'll just spray right through this too. And we'll just clean her up, get rid of it, because it's not worth taking the crop. It's going to be a weed mess. There's not a lot here. So we'll zero it out, collect insurance on this. It'll pay some. You know, it's not going to be excessive, but it'll be nice. So this is the worst. I'll take you guys to the best stuff. Oh, yeah. It's turning. That's all cheatgrass. We don't like cheatgrass. It's starting to go to head. I should have sprayed it about a week ago. More than a week ago, two weeks ago. And by the time we finally got to it, it was just starting to head out. That stuff is just amazing. It'll grow regardless. But it's changing color. It used to be bright green. Now it's turning into like a purpley brown. It shows the herbicide is working. So that took care of that. So I'm glad to see that. Hopefully those seeds don't, uh, aren't fertile. And they're just uh, controlled. That's the goal. But I'm glad I sprayed this. It's good. See those two green right there? Yeah, they're on our list to move still. So we're not done with Boggs Bay, but Bin Boom yet. We're getting there. We're not done yet. I hope we just are playing musical chairs and grain bins the last like 15 years. It's been amazing. But we'll get it all done how we want it done. And it's gonna be amazing. And our kids are gonna enjoy all the fruits of the labor that we put in right now. Cause it'll be a nice bin yard for them. Oh yeah, this is much better. This is one of our better winter wheat looking fields, if not the best. Again, there's, there's still some thin spots, but considering conditions, I mean, just look how far along this is compared to that other winter, winter wheat I just showed you guys. And it's thick here. So we'll see what happens. But this could be a crop that we might take to harvest. The rest of it stuff, the peas hopefully will go to harvest. This will go to harvest. But the spring wheat and the barley is ruling out on that stuff. It's gonna need at least three inches of water between now and July to have a very marginal crop. And if we don't get that, it's gonna be about a nothing crop and we're gonna to have to spray it all out. So we'll see what happens, uh, but there is some forecast for next week for a little bit of rain. If we keep getting these little spurts of rain, it might be enough just to keep the plants alive. And then hopefully soon here, we'll just get a big rain event that'll dump an inch, inch and a half, maybe even two inches in the ground. And that'll carry us a couple weeks. And that would be amazing. Praying for that, absolutely praying for that. Okay, there's a job on the farm that uh, the person with the shortest straw gets. I don't know if that's good or bad, but this is our, our chicken house. Uh, we have the chicken pen back there, but we kicked them all out because they, they, this floor doesn't sell flush. Um, so anyway, we're, uh, I'm in here observing and this is my daughter, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hi. All right, she's here visiting with her children and husband um, for a while, so uh, I'm... I'm a little behind on the farm work. <laughs> You're a little bit behind? You gotta catch up? I got some catching up to do. All right, yeah. Well, once in a while you get me in, in kind of a predicament, so uh, you gotta scrape by. So anyway, yeah, so uh, I gotta move a couple things. These are the... Um, Roosting. Ah, oh, looks like there's some eggs in there. Yeah, I noticed that. There's the chickens. And there's the residue. But yeah, she's doing a great job. Uh, so anyway, I'm gonna help move a few things out of here um, and then she can be able to finish up uh, the rest of this uh, scraping. Uh, she's really a trooper. Uh, so, well, <laughs> a dusty trooper. Okay, floor is now cleaned up. 
Now all we gotta do is wash and wax it. <laughs> I thought we were going to paint the floor. Yeah, well, it was painted. <laughs> a little rough coat. But, uh, yeah, well, this is really something to crow about. You got this done. That's awesome. All right, well, good. I'm glad we're, we got this done. <laughs> I didn't have to do much. Appreciate it, Lisa. It's fun. Yeah, they're with us for uh, a short time, and then eventually they'll be heading over that little pond called the Atlantic Ocean. Tiny, tiny. Yeah. Jump yep. It. Yep. They'll be heading over to the looking at the Czech Republic, and uh, so another four, possibly four-year uh, stint over there. So um, we're gonna miss them. Well, he's especially when, to visit. Well, especially when this is about a year, well, and I look at the covering. Yeah. We'll come over. All right. We'll do that. <laughs>